In this short demonstration, we're going to show, show integration between some of our products, uh, AppScan, uh, our access management appliance, our IPS, and of course, Curator. The demo is going to start by showing that AppScan has scanned this application, this web-based application, and has found some vulnerabilities that it reported into Curator. So now Curator is watchful of any type of exploit against those vulnerabilities. Then we show how a user, Jendo, logs in through port 1 into it's going to access the, the application that is front ended by our appliance. Our appliance challenged Jendo with a user ID and password. The user ID and password is OK, and the user completes the login to his banking application and can see his accounts, etc., or her, her accounts information. Then Jendo is going to actually launch a SQL injection attack. And AppScan detected that that application was susceptible to SQL injection attack. In particular, it's a union select type of SQL injection attack. So Curator is watchful for those things. And our IPS uh, is being configured to actually report onto Curator when it detects uh, those type of attacks. It's not set up in this particular case uh, to block those, uh, those attacks. So we see that the SQL injection attacks is successful and the attacker is actually able to see user IDs and passwords on, on the application. Then using, we close the browser and using another port, port 3, we have Jendo to actually log in again to the application front ended by our, our access management she gets back to the application and because it's now put on a port that is actually using our web application firewall in our appliance, we are going to be able to block that SQL injection attack going the second time. So we are now in the Curator console and we're going to go to the Asset Database, uh, the Asset tab, and we're going to look for the actual application that apps can scan. We can look at it, uh, like, as we're going to be doing right now, by the port. We could have a uh, look at it by the host name, which is app uh, server 1. But we look here on the, on, by the port. And we see that our asset database has been enriched by the information detected by AppScan. So it, it, here's the, the host name. Uh, we see the name of the application. And when we click down into it, we can see some information, in particular, some vulnerabilities reported by Big Fix and other components. But in particular, we are looking in here for AppScan, and we, we see that AppScan detected that application is susceptible to SQL injection type of attacks. Pretty good. So we go into the log activity part of uh, Curator, and we're going to select a search that is going to be watchful for identities. Remember that we, we said that we're going to be showing how the user uh, uh, logs in. So we, we put, we're looking for successful logins only and to show you what we are watching for. So we go going to open a browser and go into this Altoro uh, uh, application. Here is the ISAM challenging the user in front of the application. The user puts a body the user ID and password and it's going to be able to log in to that application. And we see that this is a, a fictitious bank. And uh, Jane Doe can actually see her transactions, recent transactions. So she clicks on that link. And she can see all her account information. But now she's going to launch that SQL attack. Well, first of all, showing you here that the login succeeded. You, you, you see it there. And we can see that the uh, curator picked up, uh, let me pause it here so we can actually click on it, it was looking in real time. So we can click on the actual event and see that the identity of the person is Jane Doe. So not only we're going to report on IP, but we're going to say who was using the IP, the, uh, the, that, that, that particular address at that particular time. So 
uh, ton of information that hasn't reached the asset database. We know who the user is, we know what vulnerabilities are on that particular application. So now we're going to set up a search that is going to look for the union select type of SQL injection. Uh, I'm sure it should be one of these over here, SQL injection union select uh, oh it is right here that, that's that's the the search that we're gonna actually want to set so nothing has happened right now so we go into the browser that we were before and in in this field that hasn't been properly validated apps can detect that we're actually going to inject the SQL injection so we go to a notepad that I have the actual format of the union select type of SQL injection and I'm going to do copy paste of that type of attack so I do control V control V or let me just show that I'm doing actually copy of that statement SQL statement that is going to be launch in that particular field. So I'm going to paste it here and I'm going to submit that. And we're going to see what we get. What we get is actually all the user IDs and passwords of the data that exist on the database. Notice that admin admin user ID and password uh, that we're going to actually use for the second part of this video for another attack. But now that we show that we succeeded with that attack, let's see what is it that uh, Curator detected. Curator was watchful because there was a, a vulnerability on that uh, application. And when he saw that the IPS reported an exploitation of a SQL injection, well, it warned, uh, it made a big deal about it because we're getting an attack that has a lot of relevance. Notice that the relevance number is being set up to 10 in there. So, pretty good. We're going to close the browser. And I'm going to open it again, and I'm going to go to that second port. Before we were in port 1, now we're going to go in port 3, where we have the web application firewall of our ISAM appliance activated and set up for blocking this type of attack. Notice that that's port 3, so we go as before with Jane Doe. Log in as before. It's 12 o'clock and we get the same information we go to the recent transactions to get that field that we know is vulnerable and when we try to launch that attack our web application firewall capabilities of the ISAM appliance is going to block it so we click some, and we, that's the type of answer that we get no data we don't want to pass any information to the attacker but the attack has been blocked